Hello, dear students. Good day. So, I am your Sir Mark, and I'm your laboratory preceptor for this particular course. Now, um, for today, what we're going to discuss is, of course, um, the first topic in every laboratory class that you may have from since from first year until now that you are third year, and that is your laboratory safety. Um, yeah, laboratory safety or safety in the clinical laboratory. Now, if you may ask, Sir Mark, why do we need to always keep on repeating this, or why do we keep um, you know, reviewing this stuff when I already know about this. Perfect na ko, Annie. Like, yes. <laughs> Actually, it's important because, of course, we work in the clinical lab. And we must understand and we must know what are the different hazards and what are the different safety precautions that one should um, follow in order to prevent any accidents and any um, untoward incidents that could happen to the laboratory personnel and also to the patient um, in the future, okay? So again, this is your safety in the clinical laboratory. This presentation is created by Miss <laughs> Minette Silva, of course. You may have already known Ma'am Minette from your previous classes, right, with her. And um, so again, uh, this is safety in the clinical laboratory. And I po apologize if ang video kay wala. Medyo ngit -ngit. Wala pa ko yung ring light. <laughs> so wala pa ko naka afford okay i'll just buy ring light soon okay anyway all right so again this is a sa safety in the clinical laboratory all right now of course of course of course our first uh, part is to di differentiate between universal precautions and your standard precautions now according to universal precautions we should treat all human blood and certain human body fluids as if they were known to be infectious for blood-borne pathogens. I'm sure you already know what are examples of blood-borne pathogens. Of course, you have your HIV, you have your hepatitis B virus, you have your hepatitis C virus, and etc. Now, what is the difference between universal precautions and standard precautions? Now, for universal precautions, as you may have looked, or if you, as you may have noticed, um, it's not stipulated there that you should wear PPE, right? So for standard precautions, Standard precautions adapts this um, statement, but now including PPE. So you should use PPE for all patient care that exposes a healthcare worker to body fluids in any type of setting. So that's the difference between universal precautions and standard precautions. Universal precautions is again, um, to treat all body fluids and all bodily specimens as if they were contagious or infectious. Whereas for standard precautions, it follows this, but now with the use of PPE, all right? And then what laboratories follow or what we follow is usually the standard precautions, okay? All right? Okay. Okay. After that, of course, we'll now proceed to the different types of safety hazards or the different biosafety hazards or safety hazards that can be found in the laboratory. So, of course, first we have your biological hazards. Next, you have your sharps, of course. Chemical hazards, radioactive hazards, which are usually not common in our routine clinical lab. Um, electrical hazards, fire or explosive hazards, and your physical hazards. Okay. Now, we go now to your first hazards, and that is your biological hazards. I'm sure you're all familiar with biological hazards. And when we say biological hazards, it just means um, the source of these hazards are your infectious agent mismo. So it could be bacteria, it could be your viruses, parasites, or even your fungi. And yeah, these can cause bacterial, fungal, viral, or parasitic infections. Now, please take note of this symbol. Again, this is what we call as your biological hazard symbol or your biohazard symbol. Lumalabas to sa boards, okay? So, ginaunsa siya pag ano sa boards? Like, um, what is described the biological hazard symbol? Um, it's three circles with an overlapping one circle at the center. So, muna siya, lumalabas sa boards. Wala na labas sa mong boards, pero before daw. Okay, alright. So, again, that's your biological hazards. Now, what is considered to be the most harmful biological hazard in the laboratory? Now, what we consider as the most harmful biological hazard in the laboratory is known as your coxidioides imitis. Okay, so, Sir Mark, unsan ni siya? Unsan ni coxidioides imitis? Coxidioides imitis is a fungi, okay? So you will have this in your mycology in the second semester. Fungi, and it is a dimorphic. Okay, wow, what is dimorphic? Dimorphic fungi. So meaning, dimorphic, it can exist in two forms, okay? So either um, a yeast, okay? Or a no, charot. Yeast or <laughs> a mold. So coxidioides imitis is a yeast at body temperature, so at 37 degrees Celsius, and a mold at room temperature. Okay, so this is um, very deadly 
na kind of um, fungus. Because again, it's dimorphic, so it can exist either as a mold or a yeast, okay, depending on the temperature. And the disease that this causes is known as your San Joaquin Valley, yes, fever. Ayan, San Joaquin Valley fever, okay? And um, usually, mak- makuha natin siya from uh, pigeon. Ayan, pigeon droppings. Okay? Alright. That's again your most harmful biological hazard to laboratory personnel. Because again, um, this releases spores. Okay? Now, sa, at, sa lab, if you have plates na culture ang coccidioides imitis, it should be taped around the corners so that ang spores dili ma-inhale sa lab personnel. Because again, this is considered to be the most harmful biological hazard to lab personnel, and that is your coccidioides imitis. Dimorphic fungi, dimorphic meaning it exists in both forms, either yeast or mold. Yeast at room tem- at sorry at body temperature and mold at room temperature. And what is the disease that coccidioides imitis causes? It's your San Joaquin Valley fever. Asa na to makuha ang coccidioides imitis from pigeon droppings. Okay? So that's for biological hazards. Now, next is your hand washing. Now, what is considered to be the best? The best? The best way to break the chain of infection and that is your hand washing. Now, again, these are hand washing. Again, considered to be the best way to break the chain of infection. Very important right now to have your proper hand washing because of this pandemic, again, of course. And um, the most important um, most important principle or the most important function or most important um, component in hand washing is known as your friction because walay pulos maghugas siya ka and walay friction okay so dapat na ay friction mm, bakla <laughs> okay sorry so again dapat na ay friction okay all right and again unsa na mga songs ang pwede natong i- sing you have happy birthday so repeated twice okay actually nakakita ko post on sa Facebook of different songs mostly Broadway songs to siya yes so Broadway songs again from uh, Facebook as uh, that can be used for hand washing songs. Actually, the kind songs na pwede. As long as you do hand washing for at least how many seconds? 20 seconds. Okay? So, at least 20 seconds. That's for hand washing. Again, dapat na ay friction because that's again the most important component or the most important um, uh, thing in hand washing. Okay? Kaya walang pulos masigag hinaw dira pero wala po eh, friction. Okay? So, dapat na ay friction. Okay? <laughs> Alright. Again, that's for hand washing. Um, again, the best. The best way to break the chain of infection. Now, next is your hand washing steps. Now, you may ask, Sir Mark, kailangan mo na to study ng hand washing steps? Yes, because lumalabas ito sa boards. Yes, uh, board exam na. Third year naman good. Charot. Okay. Anyway, so again, hand washing steps. As you can see, um, ang question sa board sa una is what is the last step in hand washing? That is, turn off faucets with a used paper towel to prevent recontamination. Okay. So as you can see again, um, uh, this is based on Strasinger, a book in your uh, clinical microscopy or analysis of urine and body fluids. So again, last step is your uh, turn off the faucet. Okay, so again, you should be familiarized. If not familiarized, memorize the steps of your hand washing. Okay, again, bahala kung sa basic, mugawas gina sa boards. Okay, all right. Next one is, of course, your PPE. I'm sure you're all familiar with your PPE from first year until now. Ikapila nin siya gina under, um, you know, emphasize, gina hatagan of importance because, um, again, that's one of your best friends sa lab. And especially now, na nai pandemic, uh, this is given really much more importance, and that's your personal protective equipment. So, of course, your personal protective equipment, your gown, mask, goggles, gloves, pwede pong napati mga lain na mga stuff. I forgot. <laughs> Pero most of the time, we use go- gloves, mask, goggles, and gown. Now, how do we don? Meaning, how do we uh, wear? Your uh, PPE, again, we have a dance step, and that is this, <laughs> and that last. So, we'll start with your gown, and then your mask, your gloves, and then finally your go- uh, gloves, okay? So, again, you have your gown, mask, goggles, the eye, sorry, and gloves, okay? So, gown, mask, goggles, and then finally your gloves, okay? And how do we doff, or how do we take it off? So, um, alphabetical lang. So, you start with gloves, followed by, by goggles, and then gown, and finally mask. Okay, so sa una sa akong second year uh, public health students, 
Um, I believe murag each laboratory preceptor na a different way of doffing and donning. So, kani ako rang follow from CDC, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So, again, basta last yun na pinaka-contaminated. Ay, last ni mong i-wear ang um, pinaka-sterile and then ang imong i-dispose una ang pinaka-contaminated, which is your gloves. Okay? So, again, for donning, donning pangilinan, charot, donning, <laughs> Like, na ni like ako rin magkatawa wala ko students anyway ah, so again donning all right and then you have doffing again alphabetical okay all right so again here gloves must be changed between every patient but again since we're in the Philippines which is a very very developing country um wala tay mabuhat kundi ato ra siyang i-recycle until um visibly soiled so mo change na ta until it's visibly soiled okay all right Okay, so my board exam question sa una, like which of the following is not a PPE? So ang example ato kay ang choice is um, uh, goggles, uh, goggles, mask, N95 filter, and alcohol. So what's your answer? Okay, so ang answer ato is ang alcohol. Because N95 filter, as you may have remember, or your HEPA filter, di ay, sorry, HEPA filter, makitan siya sa N95. So therefore, HEPA filter can be considered as your PPE. So, na mga inana na board exam questions. Guys, watch out. Okay, alright. So, again, that's for your PPE. Very self-explanatory. Kapila na sigbalik-balik. Alright, and again, the purpose of your goggles, masks, and face shields is, of course, to protect your mucous membranes, which can serve as your portals of entry, okay, for your infectious agent. Okay, alright. Now, how do we dispose again biological wastes? Of course, for your specimens, especially in the clinical microscopy lab or in bacteriology na lab, the kind of specimens na process, so it could be urine, it could be feces. Before we uh, dispose it off to the yellow container, we always put a sodium hypochlorite solution, okay, so that ma disinfect man lang siya pag labay. But again, there's an exception, except urine. This is according to Strassinger pa rin. Urine can be disposed of in the sink. As long as after you dispose it on the sink, ang, ang sink mo siyang i-disinfect with sodium hypochlorite solution. Okay. And what is the best concentration for sodium hypochlorite? That is 1 is to 10. 1 is to 10 sodium hypochlorite. Effective ni siya ang stock solution ni mo for one month. But it should be changed daily. Okay? Alright. Ayan. That's for biological waste. Who is considered or what is considered, again, the most harmful biological hazard to lab personnel? That is your... Coxidioides imitis. Okay, how many seconds uh, dapat mag hand washing? At least 20 seconds. Okay, alright. Now, this next part, again, this is what you call your chain of infection. Ayan, lumalabas dito sa boards. Now, na memorize na ba ang components of the chain of infection? Sir Mark, wala pa. Oh my gosh. Okay, alright. So, we have a mnemonics for that. You have your IREMS. Okay. So, I, I stands for your infectious agent, of course. Next, you have your reservoir. Okay, your reservoir. Next is your portal of entry. Of course, una sa ang portal of ah, exit. Sorry, sorry. Portal of exit. Sorry. And then next, you have your mode of transmission. Finally, nakafine na siya glaing person to infect. Nakita na siya glaing kabiga. <laughs> so, musulod na siya. Portal of entry. And finally, you have your susceptible host. Okay, ayan. So, very easy to remember, di ba? Irene's. Infectious agent, reservoir. Then finally, you have your um, your portal of exit. Mugawas na siya kay daghan kay sila. Inana. And then uh, mode of transmission again could be droplet, airborne ba siya? It could be through food, vectors like animals, insects. And then finally, portal of entry. So makakita na siya og uh, kasudlan, like new person to infect, and that is now your susceptible host. Now, your portal of exit and portal of entry can be the same. Pwede ang mouth, pwede ang nose, again, pwede ang, um, you know, uh, the bloodstream. Yeah, pwede na na. Okay. Alright. And again, mode of transmission is how it is transported or transferred to a different host. So, pwede again, vectors, pwede foodborne pa siya, airborne droplet. Okay, yun na So, reservoir. Reservoir is like a place kung asa siya mo mature. Okay? So, mature sa siya dito before siya mo infect or magpadaghan sa siya before siya mo infect. Okay? So again, this is your chain of infection. Please, please take note of these components. Lumalabas to sa boards. Again, IREMS, infectious agent, reservoir, exit, unaha, portal of exit. M is the mode of transmission. 
E is the portal of entry. And last one is, of course, your susceptible host. Okay, Irene's. And what is again considered to be the best? The best. The best way to break the chain of infection? That is your hand washing. Okay. Sorry. Again. All right. Break the link. Okay. 